Welcome to the Happiness Alliance Happiness Index training video. In this video, we're going to show you how to work with your data sheet from the Happiness Index. Highly recommend that you go ahead and grab your own version of the template off of our website at happycounts.org and also enter your data into that template. So let's get going. Now, when you get your data, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to notice that in this sheet, there are a lot of blank columns. The first thing that you're going to want to do is delete those columns. So go ahead and grab the columns and delete them. The reason that these columns are here is because the happiness index used to have more questions than it has now. We've gone through now four different rounds. These questions that we deleted, we found were redundant, that we were getting just as good of data with the questions that we now have. Now, when you have your happiness index, you can add questions. Um, you can also bring some of these questions that we have back if you want, but you wanna be real careful with that because if you add too many questions, people are not going to finish your survey. They might start, but they'll get discouraged because there's too many questions and they'll, they won't, you won't have a good, what's called a finish rate. We have actually a really great finish rate. One of the reasons is because the survey is not too long and the other reason is because people get their own scores at the end. We're not going to show you how to work with the tourism questions that are for planet happiness, but you are going to figure out how to do that from this, this video, so don't worry. Okay, you notice that in this sheet that the questions are, the answer scores are on a score of 0 to 10 and 1 to 5. Well now, when you get your score sheet, it's not going to look like this. The reason these are here are so that you can make sure that you scale everything correctly. Okay, now we have our raw data all nice and configured. We're gonna go ahead and make a copy of that, create a copy, okay? And we're gonna call this raw two. We're gonna just put it down here and that way we have our backup raw. If something happens that we're not happy with and we wanna go back and start over again. So now I have put together something for you that's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's called four calcs. So go up there and just go ahead and copy and paste this, these one through six columns. Go back to your raw data sheet and go ahead and paste them in. Okay, um, you'll notice that we're seeing some, some scores there and, um, and also we're seeing some counts, but those are some pretty big counts for just the little bit of data there, right? Well, the truth is, is that there is a whole bunch of data underneath this actual real data. We're not gonna show that data to you, but we're gonna work with it. The reason we don't show it to you is because we follow the GDPR and we talk about that in another video. We protect people's data. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more manageable. It doesn't wanna do that because it has those words in it. So we're gonna go ahead and just copy that or select that and then just make this a little bit more manageable. There, those numbers sound a little more manageable, but notice that they're not on a scale of zero to 100. Now we like to scale things on a scale of zero to 100 for a couple of different reasons. One is that you see that we have our questions on two different scales. Well, that doesn't work very well, right? If you're saying somebody scored a four in satisfaction with life, but a four in purposeful and meaningful life, those are very different scores, right? A four in purposeful and meaning would, would be a pretty high score, but a four in satisfaction with life would be a pretty low score. 100 is always the best score. Uh, or five, and if you would want to do a scale of one to five and 10, and zero or one is always the lowest score. So for example, overall, how anxious did you feel yesterday? If you end up with a score of 10, that means you didn't feel at all anxious. If you end up with a score of zero, you were very anxious. If you end up with a score of 10 on happy, you were very happy. A score of zero, you're not at all happy. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit more. We're gonna get rid of the answer choices here. And now the first thing that we're gonna do before we scale is we're gonna do something that I like to do, which is to color code. And the reason I do that is because these domains can be kind of hard to follow. So we're gonna go to, we're gonna to go to more colors and go to the crayons here. And let's first color the um, satisfaction with life. And then we can see, you can see now if you went ahead and um, and copied and pasted 
the section there, you'll see now that the domains are already uh, listed there. So you don't have to actually go through. Oh, I forgot to do this. I really like to have all of my borders showing. It just makes things a lot easier for me. So the next section is health. It's got four questions and you can go to more colors. You see, I already have the colors there, but you can go to more colors. Oh, actually I did a little trick on myself, didn't I? I prefer to have things a little more ordered. So I go to the crayon piece and then I go to the next color and then I go to the next domain has four questions, that's health. So I'll go to more colors to the crayons over there. If you remember, that means yellow. And we're gonna do this for every single domain. This is the time balance domain. Now Bhutan was the first government that started measuring time balance. Lots of countries have measured uh, the way that people use their time, time usage, but this time balance was a novel thing that Bhutan did. Our happiness index is modeled after Bhutan's happiness index. They're, they call it their gross national happiness index with their permission. Although you'll see in the methodology that we worked with researchers at San Francisco State to develop this. We're going to go into community. We're going to color that lovely blue green. And then social support is going to be colored a lovely blue, a lovely sky blue. We'll go right there. There it is. And we've just got a few more domains to color in. Now, all of this work requires a great deal of concentration. So here I am talking while I'm doing this. You don't want to be talking while you're doing this. I can. And you will be able to after you've done this hundreds of times. Um, but while you're doing this, go ahead. Don't try to listen to the radio or watch TV or have a conversation with somebody because you'll get lost and then something will happen and then you'll have to start all over again. Okay, so last color, that bright pink that we had, remember we had placed that for the domain social support. Okay, so now we have everything color coded. So we have our domains color coded, we have our, our, our questions color coded, but we don't have them scaled. Well, here I have some ways for you to scale them. And this is what I do. And I will talk to you about why I do this. And I encourage you to try to do it a different way and see how it messes up. Um, and if you find it even better way, then let me know. So zero to 10 scale, we're going to quest, we're going to copy the zero to 10 scale questions. That's columns I through M. So let's go over here and we'll go to column I and we'll paste that back in. Okay, now here we go. We don't need this in here. It's just gonna make things a little bit confusing. So let's go ahead and select here. We're gonna select all those like we did before. As a matter of fact, when we pasted them, we could have just left it there. We're gonna to go to edit. That's gonna be on the very top menu up there. And we're gonna to go to find and replace now. We don't start with one. If we start with one, then um, we're going to have real problems. We're going to start with 10 and we start with 10 up here and we turn 10 into the word 10 and we replace all. Now, if you wanted to do a histogram, you could go ahead and gather the numbers of people who answered say 10, nine, eight, and you could do this for a domain or you could do it for a question using this function. It's up to you. So we're going to go eight. And this is the part when we're doing this. This is the part where it's just so absolutely important to pay attention to what you're doing. If you lose your focus, then you will lose every all of your work. Um, six, replace all. Okay. And we can always, like, just say I'm talking to you and then I forgot where I I am full and I put four in there. No, I don't want to do that. I can see right here. I haven't done five yet. And I don't want to call five, four. Really? That would really mess things up, right? So, so I'm going to go four is F-O-U-R. And we'll go three. We're coming down to the end here of this step. Place all. And then we're going to go two is two. And it wouldn't it be nice if we could just say, okay, Every time you see one, replace it with a 10, right? Um, not uh, O-N. There we go, replace all. Try it. Try doing that. See what happens. And we'll turn that into a zero. Okay, now we're going to, we're not going to start with zero. We're going to start with 10. 10 is going to turn into, we're going to scale this on a scale of 1 to 100. It's going to turn into 100. And 8 
nine, sorry, is going to turn into 90. Yeah. And eight is going to turn into 80. If you were to misspell one of these, and then you did a hunt and seek again, then um, you'd have problems, right? So that's why we have sorry, x turns into 60. And that's where we have um, this little template here where you can you can see. Um, so we were at six, so we're going to be five. And that, of course, is going to be 50. That's right in the middle, neither happy nor unhappy. Um, we would like to have a scores of 70 for our populations. 70 or above is it's pretty good. Uh, too happy is maybe not such a great thing, um, but unhappy is definitely not a good thing. So there's lots of research about this and you can go ahead and do a literature review. We talk about that in another bit video. Two is going to turn into 20. And one is going to turn into 10. And then the least happy of all, let's see how many people we have here. That's zero, C-E-R-O is going to turn into zero, replace all 492 of those. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close that. And we now we have our zero to 10 scale that's been um, nicely scaled to zero to 100. But what about our one to five? Let's grab those. So we're gonna go N, starts at N and it goes all the way to BF. Okay, most of the planet happiness questions are on a zero, one to five scale. Although, um, oh, let's go to N and paste that in there. Okay, although there is one set of questions that's on a, a one to three scale, so you'll have to scale that differently. So your one would be zero, your three would be 100, and your um, two would be 50. So we'll go, remember we already had that selected, but I wanted to empty that out. So we'll go ahead and there we go. We've got those all selected. Now, if you didn't select all of them, that would be a problem. But this one, we're going to go to edit, find, replace. And we're going to, once again, start with five. And that's going to be, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Five is going to be five, replace all. And four is going to be four. Now, when you, if you're going to um, publish a methodology with uh, a scholarly publication, you're going to want to explain all of these steps that you did. So uh, you'll actually write all of these down as if kind of think of it as uh, leading the blind in your methodology. So two, we're, we're on track. We can see from our little, little uh, example template that I gave you. One, if I saw. Okay, and then we're going to go backwards. Five is going to become 100. Yes. And four is going to become 75. Pretty happy. Um, and three is going to become 50. Neither happy nor unhappy. Not the best place to be because if something bad happens, it's, then you go down and you don't you kind of don't have a lot of resilience oftentimes. Two is gonna be 25, not very happy. Definitely not a place where we want our people to be and where we wanna be ourselves. And one is gonna be zero, that's just no good. We do not want people to be that way. We don't wanna be that way ourselves. Okay, we've already got this selected. We're gonna go ahead and copy that and we'll go into our raw sheet. Remember we have our raw sheet here and now, I'm just thinking we've already got all these nice numbers in here, right? So let's go ahead and um, there's lots of different ways that you can do this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make a copy, another copy of raw. And this will be called raw three. So I'll call this scaled. Now I'm gonna go back to my one to five because I know that's selected, copy it. And then I'm gonna go and I like to do this because then I can see that it's doing, it's doing it correctly. Paste it. And you see, I don't have my numbers in there because I pulled them out of there, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing with zero to 10 scale. I'm gonna go to scaled. And I'm going to put 
them in there. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have my domain averages, my question averages, my number of responses. So the way that you can do, the way that you do that is first you go ahead and get your average, average for your questions. Now, I could just go ahead and select like this, but this has got so much data in it that it's gonna be really taking forever to do that. So I'm gonna go I, because it's in column I, and actually my data starts at 50. And then I'm gonna use, you can see this data up here. And then I'm gonna, you can see that in this, I'm gonna go to I and I'm gonna go to 20,000. So no, I don't have more than 20,000 sheep. No, I don't have 20,000. So, so there. That is for that question. That's the average for that question. I can go ahead and pull that down. And now I have it for the domains. And now I want the average for the domain. So I'm going to go the average for all of the domains. So the average, and you're going to explain this in your methodology, um, your average is the average of all the questions. Now, in this, I have included everybody who's answered a question. So how do I know how many people answered a question? Equals count. C O oh my goodness. C O U N N T N T goodness. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I 50 to I 20,000. I know I don't have that much data, but that's okay. And so that's 299.2 there. And I'll drag that down. So you can see, already see we're losing some people. Not that many though. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna have this be happening for every domain. Um, and remember that I said for calcs here. So you can go ahead and you can grab that or we actually have it over here, right? We have it in the raw so we can copy that and we can put it into the scaled. And we can always test things. Remember that's 50.73, see if that comes out the same. And let's see what happened. Didn't come out the same, why? Because it's M7. Okay, so let's turn this into 50. And now when we go ahead and, and drag this through, we're gonna lose our color, but that's okay. So there we go, another red color there. All right, so, so now we have our, our averages and we can look at our counts too. And we can see that we ended up with about 2000 people who, a little less than 2000 people who finished the survey and about 3000. So that's a pretty good finish rate. Anything over 50% is a pretty good finish rate. Now the question is, do we only wanna use the scores for people um, who, who finished every single question, we would want to look at the demographics as well. Or do we want to include scores for everybody who took the survey, and even those who didn't finish it? And that's up to you. That's completely up to you. I asked my friend, John Hall, who works at the United Nations Development Program and helped develop the OECD Better Life Index and the um, indicators for the Australian government for the sustainable development. And he said that um, both both are okay. So in a research project, you're gonna to wanna to only use the people who have finished the entire survey most of the time, just because that's the way research is done. But for you, you can choose what you wanna do. And you just wanna explain that. Okay, so now we have our domain scores and we have our question scores and we have our counts. Um, so we can do a little bit of analysis. Let's just, I, I'd like to put our domains into a prettier format. This is a little hard to read. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go over to the sheet that says domains and I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna do a little magic, a uh, little bit of a Excel magic. I'm not gonna just paste it. I'm gonna just paste it as values because if I were to just paste it, I would end up with um, a little error because that's actually a calculation, right? So let's again, let's make this more manageable. I'm not sure why it, Excel does that. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Make sure we have everything. And I want to shorten this up, make it a little more manageable. Yep. Now, remember how we got rid of columns? We're going to do this again. You really got to pay attention because if you get rid of a column with one of the scores in it, that's going to be a problem, right? 
because then you're not going to root like, like which one, what goes where. You just have to start all over again. So we're just going to get rid of all of these empty fields. Just really focusing. We're not multitasking. We're not daydreaming. We're not thinking about what we want to eat for dessert tonight. And really keeping ourselves concentrated. Now we're going to copy this. This time we can just copy it regular. And we'll go back down here. We're going to go here where we want it, near one. And we're going to do another bit of magic. We're going to go space, paste. Paste special, sorry about that, and transpose. Okay, there are our domain scores. So you might have them over a course of years, or you might have, for example, one year and another year, or one quarter, or another quarter. But you might want to put domain scores for um, different aspects of demographics. We'll talk about that in a different video. But in any case, this is what we have right now. So we're going to make a chart. So insert chart and there are all kinds of wonderful things that you can do on Excel, but we're just going to do a couple little things here not a whole lot of things. I want to make this a little bigger because I like it when the domains look a little nicer like that. I want to call this happiness index scores. I just I just clicked into that. 2022 and this is for January and February. And then I want to see how it says to 80. I don't like that. So I'm going to click on that. And it says, I just, I just grabbed it and clicked it. I'm going to make the maximum bound 100 because we have a 0 to 100. And then I'm not terribly fond of that color. Um, so I'm going to make it, I'll make it pink. You might want to use a different color. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, I, Clicked. Okay, let me show you. I, just, I, I clicked on. Um, let's go out here. I clicked on all of them, and then I want to add data label. That's much better. Now I'll go ahead and click my data labels, and I'll go to the home button. And I find that to be a little hard to read, so I'm going to make it 12. And I also find this a little hard to read, so I'm going to make that 12. And then I can make my chart a little bigger if I want, so that. It does that. Now, I'm not sure I want them in this. Um, this is the, the order that you take the survey in, but maybe I'd like to reorder it. So let's just grab, we'll grab these two and we'll go to data, sort, and I'm gonna sort it by year. And I want smallest to largest and I've sorted it. So now I can see that economy is where people are doing the best. Community is people where people are doing the worst. Okay, so there's some things to talk about, you know, that, that why is it that we're doing so poorly in community when actually what the data tells us is that the thing that makes us the happiest in, in of anything is our, our the time we spend with others, feeling us like a sense of community, a sense of bonding. We're actually doing pretty, pretty good in social support. That's, that's our, you can think of that as our personal relationships but our community we're doing pretty poorly in. And how important is community to uh, times of distress? How important is community to being able to be resilient? It's incredibly important. All right, so that's something that we could talk about with our, with our uh, people who have been a part of this, have gathered, we've gathered the data from, and we could talk about some of the ways that we could increase our sense of the community. We're doing okay in economy, so maybe we would think of ways that we could build on our strengths that would strengthen our strengthen our weaknesses. Okay, um, that's enough of that. There's a whole lot more we could say about that, but let's just go back to our scaled data because now we'd like to look at our question averages. So let's go back to scaled. And there's a, there are a number of different things that you can do here. Number of ways is more than one way that you can do that. But for me, what I'd like to do is I want to, I'm gonna go ahead and remember I showed you how to copy so I'll go ahead and create a copy. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take all of these out because I don't need them. And now what I want to do is I want to look at, and I'm going to take responses out too, because I don't need that. And I'm going to take domain averages out. I don't need that. 
what I do, what I want to do is I want to see like where where are the scores really low? What are the questions where we're doing really low in? And then what are the ones that we're doing really high in? So I just go through and I look and I, um, oh, there's a there's a, a 34. I think I'll just go ahead and color that whole column gray. People aren't trusting in their neighbors. Mm. Here's another one, sense of people are trustworthy. This is the lost wallet question. If you left a wallet with money in it, what, what is the likelihood to think that people would return that? Also volunteering and donating. So this is giving us some really good information about how we could increase our scores in community, right? We could get to know our neighbors. We could uh, maybe if you were a government or if you were somebody who um, really wanted to do something in the neighborhood, you could maybe go to our door and maybe have a, an evening where people came together and talked about some of the problems in their neighborhood and maybe they would do something together. If you were a government, maybe you would, you would start sponsoring um, evenings out where people get together and the police come and visit when in different neighborhoods. Um, another area is trust in national government. That's a tough one. Well, we can talk about that in a little bit. Let's look at what other some areas that risk people are scoring low. All right. So the, that looks like in this sample, well, these are people who took this happiness index survey between, I'm just going over this one more time, between January and February. This is January and February. This is where people are suffering the most. So government, um, what can we do about having more trust in, in, in national government and doing more to feel engaged in national government. Well, one of the things that we can do is raise awareness about the importance of happiness and how we could use happiness metrics instead of merely economic metrics, that, which you know, happiness in metrics encompass economic metrics for guiding government. And there are governments that are doing that, such as in New Zealand, where they're using their well-being budget for their entire government and Bhutan, and now in Canada, we're starting to do some work. All right, so let's look at where people are scoring really high as they're building on our strengths. So we can go through again and we can color code those. Now we might wanna present some of this data as, um, as again, you know, you can copy and paste like I showed you and make charts out of this, or you might wanna make some, you know, some just some data stories. So let's look at if we can find 70 and above, if we're finding up. Feeling that people are not feeling like they're being discriminated against. Let's make these colors a, a different color because I will call it, we'll do this in white. So feelings of discrimination. So that means that people are not feeling like they're being discriminated against. Um, people do feel like somebody cares about them. That's great. Do you feel like somebody cares about you? That's really good. And let's see what else. Oh, people aren't going hungry of the people who took the happiness index. And so those all look pretty good. Remember that our highest was in the, the um, economic domain. And yet, you know, we don't have, well, people are feeling pretty stressed about their finances, but they're not going hungry. So what would that say? That's something about people, you know, maybe they're not feeling very secure. Um, so there's some national policy types of things that can be done around that for social support, for job security. And then there's also things that people can do in their own lives. So, but lifestyle choices, these kinds of things. And also having other resources like a community to fall back on. Feel, the feeling that people care about you is, is a really good way to um, talk, begin conversations about what really matters in life and extending that around to community and then feelings of discrimination. Now we'd really want to look into this and see what are the demographics that we've gathered our data from. So I hope that you enjoyed this. This is just some of the way that you can analyze your data. We'll go into more in another video. Go to happycounts.org at the Happiness Alliance website to go ahead and get this data sheet and get lots more information about what you can do to make the world a better place. Thank you.